So you wanna be a full-time property investor, but what do you actually do? I know that sounds really weird, but genuinely, when you suddenly fall time, you actually start to miss the confines of a job. Depending on what sort of job you're in, you have to turn up at a certain time. I know some people where it's like, you have to go for the toilet breaks at a certain time, you finish at a certain time, You all of these confines, and you think, wow, this can be really imprisoning. But actually, when you are an entrepreneur and you're full time, you really start to miss that. Because when you've got all the time in the world, you don't actually know what to do with it. So this video is gonna break that down, and we're gonna start with the most obvious one in property, not property, the money. I know that sounds a bit counterintuitive because when you're getting involved in property, you think, well, surely most of my time should be viewing properties. <laughs> no, you have to start with the money. Every single business start with the money. Imagine you went, you know what? I've got a great product idea. I'm going to design it out, get a concept into production. I'm going to get 100,000 units of this produced and then I'm going to try to sell it. That is how you go bust in any business. So instead, what would you do? Well, maybe what you do is get some designs done. You'd get concept done of it. And then what you would do is promote it to your potential customer and you see who would actually buy it. Maybe you get it all designed online and you try to sell the product online that doesn't exist yet and then see how many orders you get in. That gives you an idea of the demand. It's the same with property. Now, you know there's a demand for property, but if you don't have the finance in place, whether you are deal packaging the property, for example, and we do a lot of that. We find investors and we find them the property. But even if you're scaling your own portfolio, well, you are going to run out of money. Sorry about that. So when you run out of money and you're raising finance, whether it's bridging, whether it's a mortgage or private money lenders for the equity part of that, if you don't know what criteria you can offer them in terms of the returns and you don't know your own criteria, then it is just a property that you're going to find, not an actual deal. So I'd be saying at the start, around 60 to 70% of your time should be focused on this money. So you need to understand your strategy, which is for me, for example, boring vanilla buy to let properties. <laughs> You need to understand your location, which for me is West and South Yorkshire in the highest capital growth areas. And you need to understand what service you are providing. So for me in Aspire Property Group, we provide a hands-free service. So if you, for example, have a hundred grand or more and you want to invest in property, but you don't have the time or knowledge, that's what I help people do to build their portfolios. By the way, if that is you, you can put APG in the comments and we can have a chat later about it. But even if you are building your own portfolio and you're raising finance, you still need to know the strategy you're doing, the location and the service you're providing the investor is for them to get a healthy return on their money without any of the effort. And then you want to spend 70% of your time out there finding these investors. So you need to just think, where are they? Well, offline, they might, might be at BNI, Business Network International. They might be at Angel Investment Events, Business Networking Events. Business Curry Clubs are really popular around the UK. Loads of different locations where you get in front of the right people at the right time. But don't just think in business concept. What are they doing day to day? Are they private members clubs? Are they going to golf clubs? Are they going to private pilot license clubs where they're trying to get the license and you can go, go for lunch there and meet people? There's a lot of different places, even with their hobbies. If you were putting an ad out there in a magazine, maybe put it in a yacht club magazine where there's people with a lot of money that yachts as an investment has absolutely tanked, whereas property is going up, you can get a good perceived ad in there. What about online? Well, a lot of people go, well, LinkedIn, right? Well, yes, LinkedIn's a great example, but if you're a high-flying executive, maybe a CEO, a CFO, uh, whatever it is, a lawyer, a banker, a dentist, a doctor, a trader, whatever it is, do you think they're coming home and going, do you know what? I've had a really long day at work. I want to go on LinkedIn. No, the average person, and that is what it is, they are average people outside of work, just like you and me. Hey, maybe you're one of those high-flying executives. We're going on Instagram, scrolling through the reels like the rest of us addicts. They're on Facebook, maybe a bit of TikTok, I don't know. But all you need to do is tell people what you're doing regularly, how you can help them, and how you can get in touch. And the more you get your message out there to potential investors and get them on the phone, the more money you are going to make. All right, so now you've got the money, you've got the dough. Now we're going to go find the properties. Now, when you're going out and searching for properties, the obvious one is where? 
Right move and Zoopla. Yes, 83% of properties in the UK are sold through traditional estate agencies. An additional 5% of the properties, residential properties sold in the UK is through online estate agents, which means 88% of properties are on Rightmove. Now, are you going to find the best properties in the best area at the best price on Rightmove? No, because it's also publicly announced and advertised to every single property buyer in the UK, investor, first time buyer, downsizer, upsizer, and the rest. But it is a good place to find out who the agents are in the area that you can start building a relationship with. Go into the estate agents, talk to people, find out who walks up to you. It's not hard to find the best people, by the way. You go into an estate agency and see who gets off their bloody ass to talk to you in the first place. Who offers you a cup of tea? who's just chatting to you for the sake of it, they are the hard workers. If you go in and some snooty cow in the back is just carrying on typing, not talk to you, don't try and build a relationship with them. Build the relationships. Another top tip is letting agents. People really neglect letting agents, but what you need to think about is with letting agents, you can guarantee they have got hundreds of what? Boring vanilla buy to let properties. And also they have got a list of buy to let investors. It doesn't take a genius to work out that you might want to build a relationship with those people and see if you can tap into those resources. Or you could look at going direct to vendor. The cheapest way of doing this is probably through Gumtree if you're online or my favorite, Facebook ads. Now, Facebook ads, you can target the right people with the right message at the right time and get the leads coming to you. But there's loads of offline methods as well. For example, you've got your leaflets, direct mail, banner boards, you can get your van, plastered it in about advertisement, whatever you want to do. But again, very similar to the uh, investor side, get your message out there to as many people as possible. The more people that know online and offline what you do, very quickly you will have properties coming to you instead of you needing to go out all the time and finding the next investment. So as I said, we've got 70% of our time focused on getting in the money and are probably about 20% of our time actually finding the properties. Next, we are looking at the analysis. What makes a property a deal is the criteria that we've been given from the investor or our own criteria. We're going to plug that criteria into our analyzers, whether you are using something like Lendlord or using your own spreadsheet. It doesn't really matter, but the more detail you can bring, the better. And what you want is something called a ready reckoner. I like calling it a ready reckoner because I like to be able to very quickly analyze a property in five minutes, just a stage one analysis, to quickly plug in the numbers and find out if this can be a great investment opportunity. Now, analysis is not my favorite thing in the world, if I'm completely honest but it is something you need to get great at and learn to love if you're going to be a successful property investor. The final stage is progression. A lot of people don't really talk about this, but yes, you need the money. Yes, you need the deal. But actually, your analysis stage and the progression stage takes the least time, but is really important. When I'm talking about progression, once you agree the deal and you finance it, it then goes through conveyancing. It then goes through the legal process. If you're a cash buyer, this can be four weeks. If it's a mortgage buyer, you're going to be eight to 10 weeks, maybe. It's getting quicker right now. But in general, you're going to need to manage your so this is and the mortgage broker, the refurb team at the end, and a lettings manager. So that's a breakdown of a full-time property investor. 70% of your time on the money, 20% of your time on the property and put it in the office, and 10% of your time on the analysis and progression of the investment. Of course, that's just a simple breakdown. You can go into the minutiae, and if you want me to break that down even further, let me know in the comments. And hey, if you're not full-time in property, but maybe you still want to build that portfolio and you want me to do it, but you've got the money to invest, invest, put APG in the comments and we'll see how we can help you. If you did get value from this video, make sure to destroy the like button. And if you are new to property investing and you want to find out more, make sure to hit the subscribe and the notification bell and I'll see you in the next video.